Hello, welcome to Butler School. So today we're talking about something very special. We talk about books. To be more precise, we talk about the care of books, how to look after and how to clean antique and modern books. So it's actually very simple. Your day-to-day -day care of books is very, very simple. First, I'm gonna start with some things like when you're placing books into your bookcase, try not to jam them in so tight. And okay, it doesn't matter if we're talking about your latest paperbacks, that's not such an, an issue, but with antique books, try not to put them too tight together because what you want to do is be able to put your fingers between them and pull them out from the middle, as opposed to from the top. You don't want to pull them down from the top, you want to pull them out from the middle, okay? Obviously these ones aren't in the bookcase, they're balanced on the table, so I have to be a bit careful so they don't all fall over. Because if you do pull them from the top, what happens, and it's very, very common with books, it breaks the headband. So you'll see there, the actual headband of the book has been broken and that's where people have pulled it from the top. And you'll see that a lot with books. And here with this dust cover, this has been caused by the same thing, it's where it's been pulled from the top. But first of all, let's just have a look at your um, sort of daily cleaning routine for your books. So if I just remove one of these books from the middle. Now, it's going to be very heavy. Obviously, this is gilt. This is gold leaf, which is very delicate. You don't want to put any cleaning chemicals at all on that. Don't put, you know, no pledge or any of those. Don't use anything like that on there. Um, or damp sponges. What you can do is if it's a leather a leather cover, you can use, if you have to, if it really needs it, very sparing amount of leather cream on there. And just put a little tiny dab on a cloth and just work it in. But only do that if you feel that the leather is getting dried out. If you've got, people have very hot houses generally these days. Books don't like to be stored above 20 degrees really between about 16 and 19 degrees is your sort of sweet spot for storing books. But a lot of people these days like their house a lot warmer than that. Um, so um, if it is warm, the leather tends to dry out, the pages tend to dry out as well, and, and you'll find they can actually become very fragile and break very easily. If it's colder than that, again, it gets very cr crunchy and can break easily um, because it doesn't move enough. So when you're cleaning your spine of the book, now I've got a few different brushes, always use brushes to clean your book. Now this brush um, I'm not gonna use. This is just to show you one that I'm not gonna use because this has got nylon bristles. Now nylon is a lot stronger than the actual book itself. So if you use the one with nylon bristles, you're actually gonna um, wear away, you're going to take this gold off, you're actually going to um, take the edges of the pages off. So don't don't use that. This is a nice, this is a very soft, pure bristle brush. This is a good one. But actually, I like even better a shaving brush because it's very, very soft. Um, so I tend to use a shaving brush just to very gently get rid of any dust. Now you want to do this at least once a week with the books because the more often, little and often is what you want to do, because you don't want to leave it so you're doing a full restoration job. And when it comes to full restorations, if it's valuable books, you really need to send them away to an expert. It's not something you can attempt yourself because it's an incredibly um, complex um, and sort of advanced process. Don't just teach yourself how to do it using YouTube videos, because it really is um, you know, something that takes years of training. But what you really want to do is remove the dust. So just look at that. See that dust? Just slide along along with the pages. Don't go crosswise because that again will damage the pages. So just go along with the pages. Like I say, this brush is absolutely fine for this as well because it's soft bristles. But it's not quite as soft as the shaving brush. So that's the one that I would personally recommend. 
and again just go all the way around the book in the same way just along with the pages and the same at the bottom now the next thing you're going to do and obviously i'm not going to suggest you do this every single week but you need to do a visual inspection of the book so you need to open the book and check that all the pages are still what you're looking for is any signs of damp uh, foxing which is you'll see sort of little uh, brown marks which are caused from um, fungus and mildew usually from damp so you're just wanting to go through don't another point is don't open the book up too far never push it beyond you can feel where it's comfortable opening to if you push it back any further you'll damage the spine so you really don't want to do that so just go through the book if you see any silver fish or bookworms or anything like that you're going to need to fumigate the book because they will eat holes straight through your books so there's a lot of different um, chemical fumigation things you can buy um, there's good instructions on the chemicals but basically you need to put them into some sort of maybe like a, um, a big plastic tub or similar with one of these little fumigation pellets and they'll kill any insects which are going to eat your books because the last thing you want to do is get halfway through a book and find out that the uh, finale has been eaten so just go through make sure it's all in good condition i mean you know, you'll see this book, which is um, over a hundred years old. It's actually in in pretty good, pretty good condition. Um, just go through like that. I'm not going to make you watch me go through every page of the book. Don't worry. But you get the idea. Just do that. Just do a visual inspection, because if you leave it too long and it sits on the shelf for years and you haven't looked at it, then by the time you do open it, you might find that there's a serious amount of work that needs doing. If I just show you this, what would be a lovely little book, it's from, I think it's from 1907. It's called Daddy Long Legs. Um, so at some point, someone's tried to protect it by covering it with um, a sort of sticky back plastic, uh, which has held the book together. Obviously, it's not what a professional book restorer would have done but I'm guessing this was just someone's beloved book that they didn't want to see degrade any further but it's obviously got very damp I mean you can see those pages um, if I open this up actually some of the leaves have come adrift the bindings actually broken there you can see it's in a bit of a sorry state there's bits of page missing now, actually, this could all be repaired by a professional book restorer. It's absolutely extraordinary what they can do. They use um, Japanese uh, long grain, um, it's a long particle rice paper, and they actually build up the pages using a natural glue, and they'll put all these pages back into shape. They'll take all this, it's, it's an incredible process. But of course, it's something that people would only normally do for the most valuable books. I mean, this book isn't of a high value. So unless it was of really great sentimental value, people are unlikely to spend thousands of pounds restoring it, which is a shame, but it's just simple economics. Um, but anyway, this, this is what you don't want your book to end up like. And if it gets damp, if it's unloved, that's what could very easily happen. So a simple recap for you. So just a thing on dust covers. Now, I really like the dust covers because actually they sort of tell a bit of the history of the book. Um, you know, I mean, obviously, like, you know, you've got your more showpiece books like this that don't have these removable dust covers. But, you know, it's just, especially on these little sort of biographies like this, it's just quite a nice little... Thing. and obviously the actual book is being protected by the dust cover and that one's been you know been on there since 1907 so it's doing a good job anyway it's just a why rip it in half <laughs> so just as a recap 
just a gentle dust with a soft natural fiber I and mean, this is badger badger hair just natural fibers just to dust off you can actually I have got one but it's not here it's at the office I have got a special book brush which you can buy it's it's not necessary I got one for the the butler school because it looks quite cool but to be honest this does the job just as Okay, well, I hope that was useful. If you've got any questions about uh, books or anything else, or if there's any topics that you'd really like me to cover in the Butler School, any specific things you'd like to know how to clean, how to look after, please just pop it in the comments. Uh, I always read all the comments, so um, I'll get back to you and see what I can do, see if I can put a, um, one together just for you. Okay, well, thank you very much. It's been a pleasure. Please do subscribe, watch my other videos. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.